Black Ops Golf War is the new Call of Duty set to come out in October of 2024. This game is going to be the direct sequel to Black Ops Cold War and is going to be slated in the 90s. As far as we know for the campaign, a couple of campaign characters have been announced throughout the game and have actually leaked the storyline that is going to take place between the CIA's coverage and the Navy SEALs coverage of the events of the Gulf War. We obviously know some character names right now but in terms of the entirety of the plot we don't know much but we do know quite a lot about zombies and multiplayer so let's get into zombies i do have to say this is going to be great news for the black ops cold war fans as this is going to be very reminiscent to black ops cold war as opposed to the og zombie styles and if you are a og zombies fan i do have an exciting announcement that i believe that cod 2025 zombies will be very OG styled and so we'll get to that in a second but I want to give a big shout out here to Robert the Great because he made some beautiful conceptual images of what the Gulf War menu could look like which is featuring some dark ether imagery while also sliding it over the standard tabbed Cold War menu featuring the play loadout operators customized battle pass event and store and he even overlaid it with Call of the Dead and Verrupt and a menu screen filled with a Black Ops collection and the Call of Duty Dark Ether new stuff that is coming out. And so this is really cool because genuinely, I don't think it'll look exactly like this, but I have to give a big shout out to this guy because I genuinely think he is very, very close and spot on considering the leaks that have been announced towards the game. As we know that five main resource stations will be featured in Call of Duty Black Ops Gulf War Zombies specifically. You obviously have the perk machines and also it is confirmed that perk cans are going to be coming back and so i can imagine the perk machines will also look like black ops cold war and the black ops cold war dur wonder fizz vending machine will be returning where you can equip various perks through a menu now what is interesting is that the black ops cold war pack bunch is coming out but we are getting the knuckle cracking animation to come back which i'm a little curious how they're going to do that now with the black ops cold war pack punch system because when you pack a bunch of cold war it brings up a menu so is there going to be another system where we double pap or is double pap just going to go back to the way it was where you randomly get it every single time i don't think we should go back to that i think there should just be a way where maybe there's a corner on each pack bunch that's like okay if you want dead wire go to this corner if you want uh this turned brain rot you go to this corner i think that would be the best way to deal with that because we don't actually know how this system is now going to be changed because the knuckle cracking animation has returned from the OG games. Now, a new system is the tool grinder. No longer are you going to be going towards the arsenal dummy machine to be upgrading your weapons. They have now separated these systems into two different machines, being the tool grinder for specifically upgrading the rarity on your weapons and also potentially even giving you randomized stuff while the arsenal is strictly for armor. I do do think this is a great change however i am very concerned because black ops cold war zombies maps were very stale because of the fact that they copy and pasted the same machines without giving a lot of love and i really hope that we get reverted back to that and again for my black ops cold war fans we have the crafting table returning where you can craft various gear so semtex grenades flashes stuns all of that stuff a bunch of equipment and also kill streaks to assist you in making sure that you stay alive. I'm excited to play another game in the Cold War system, but don't get me wrong, I definitely do hope that we get some good maps to go along it because I think that's where Cold War really suffered. As far as some other leaks that were just recently announced, we have seen some images in the game files for the ray gun to become a feature in Black Ops Gulf War, so I could imagine it's going to be the same power stats as it was in Cold War, which is a very welcome change because I absolutely love the Cold War Ray Gun. Obviously, as you guys know, we have the crafting table. Here is an image of it. But also, we have a new machine, potentially with a new string of code, where it's a machine where we craft something. So maybe, potentially, we are going to be going back to sort of the Black Ops 3 and the Black Ops 4 system where we could be crafting wonder weapons on a specific machine, which I really enjoyed back from Black Ops 3. So that is a huge plus 
for my zombie OG lovers. Now, we also know that the two maps featured in the game mode is going to be a city map, and I believe this city map is potentially going to be transit as the jet gun was found in the COD 2024 weapon files from the Modern Warfare 3 beta leak. And so this potentially means, now I really hope that this is not it, but I think this, this could actually be it. Treyarch also posted a hiring post basically confirming that there will be an objective based mode in Call of Duty Black Ops Gulf War. So we don't know if it's going to be more akin to Modern Warfare Zombies or if it's going to be more akin to Black Ops Cold War's Outbreak mode. I would guess that it would be more akin to Modern Warfare 3 Zombies as that was the most recent iteration or maybe it will be a combined version. But potentially, I believe that maybe the city map could even be an Outbreak map. I think a lot of people would be very disappointed if that was the case but i do believe these two maps are round based as we know round bases zombies is coming back and i just hope that the jet gun is also accessible in round base i think one of the worst parts about black ops cold war was them separating the zombie fans even further from the little content that we actually got between outbreak objective updates and then zombie round based objective updates and like that is where I really hope we don't see that repeat again. This game has had four years to cook. If we see that repeat again, there is absolutely no excuse for that. And I genuinely hope that they see that they cannot separate zombie fans even further after we have waited so long. And so also another thing now that is coming into the game is quick draw, which is a war zone feature. But I believe that because this is going to also be built on the war zone engine, that it could feel much smoother than what we had in Black Ops Cold War, but I just hope that it actually still feels like COD Zombies, because I think the issue that people have, including myself, is this incessant need to constantly put Warzone mechanics inside of Call of Duty Zombies. This is absolutely something we do not need, and it doesn't feel like the original Zombies that we grew up with. While yes, I understand the argument that we've always had reused assets in Call of Duty Zombies, they were always much more repurposed in the past than they are now and I hope that they don't fall into the same mistake especially because this game has been four years in the making the longest time in production that a Call of Duty game has ever taken so in my opinion especially now that Treyarch has three different studios one in Texas one in Vancouver Canada and one in Los Angeles there is absolutely no excuse and so especially because we are getting reused models from from Cold War, it just makes me feel very sad that potentially we might not get any new perk machines for the time coming. And we also have a new sort of radio pack that will be featured in Black Ops Gulf War Zombies. Now, what this reminds me of is Xfil, so it definitely seems like Xfil could also be coming back into the game, which obviously, if all of this other stuff, like I'm saying, is also going to be true with Arsenals and Crafting Table, that will also come out. We also have a base model of the Black Ops Gulf War zombie that has leaked and it looks very naked. So I hope that this is not how it's going to appear in game because this dude looks horrifying. I genuinely think they're going to add more clothes on them like they've done in the regular versions. But yeah, this is definitely very scary because the zombie looks way more deprived and depleted than other previous COD zombie titles, which I find to be quite fascinating. And now here's something that I also think is a little worrisome for Call of Duty Black Ops Call for Zombies is that we are getting the teleporting animation to come back. This was my least favorite part of Black Ops Cold War. I didn't really like in D Machine how you always constantly had to see this teleporting animation to go towards the dark ether. And then again, we saw it feature a red version of this teleporting animation in Call of Duty Vanguard. And that was an absolute snore fest. And I hope that this doesn't happen because apparently some leakers are saying that we could potentially be getting a hub area like in Vanguard or something even similar to Duron Fong and that to me is a big L. I can't even imagine why Treyarch would even decide to do that considering all of the feedback that we've given about the previous attempts for round based zombies and it has been absolutely dismal especially now that Treyarch is not even working on Modern Warfare 3 zombies. To me there's really no excuse to be really bringing back this type of stuff and reusing these animations. So do keep 
keep in mind, everything that I am saying is subject to change because these are just files that were found inside of the game, but it is a little worrisome to see this type of stuff. Now, moving on into multiplayer, because we are in getting a Cold War type of style of zombies mode, let's talk about potentially some of the new equipment that we could be seeing in Black Ops Golf War that will also be, also be featured in multiplayer that is actually already in the previous COD headquarters games being Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3. We're getting the shock stick, the drill charge, the decoy grenade, which I really love in Cold War. That's an amazing, amazing grenade. The stims, which are so much fun, the flash grenades, the concussions, the frags, the C4s, the Molotovs, the smokes, and the EMPs. EMPs, I'd actually love if they brought back into zombies specifically because I thought that that feature back in transit was always just so fun to troll your friends and whatnot. And as long as it's not like super bad as it is in transit i still think there's an amazing way for them to bring that back and make it an enjoyable feature and also there is a lot of loadout leaks that have been already shown for the cod 2024 mp default loadout so you have a bunch of different support streaks we also potentially could be seeing the return of the pick 10 system which in my opinion is 100 going to be confirmed for 2025 because if they make a black ops 2 sequel without the pick 10 system that is the biggest crime to mankind i don't care what anybody says that is genuinely so sad and so we also know that weapons like the colt model 723 are coming back we have the as val so there's going to be a lot more weapons from warzone and obviously previous cold war updates maybe even potentially stuff like the e-tool the amps the krig all returning so literally this is black ops cold war 2 as far as the leaks are concerned which I am quite excited about. Now, one of the biggest things is we need to talk about the microtransactions. For multiplayer and campaign, whatever, it's just going to be operators. Campaign, I could imagine, is probably going to be even potentially even open world is what a lot of people have been saying. Now, I don't know if this is the case, but I can guarantee you no microtransactions for campaign. That's going to be the way they get people in. Apparently, there's also a leak that zombies could be the beta entry for this game. And so they give if they give out zombies, that to me is really good news because that means they're confident about selling people and bringing those round based zombies players back to the game and so this is really exciting because obviously we know multiplayer you're going to get the same war zone same mp experience hopefully a treyarch-esque multiplayer feeling like cold war delivered and hopefully unlike what we're getting with these recent call of duty games and you guys know you're getting operator bundles now for zombies we did get a tweet from kevin drew the lead designer of this zombies game mode that he says i have come here to chew gobblegum and kick the butt and I'm all out of gobblegum and so this is the issue that I have with this are we both getting zombies operator bundles and gobblegum or is zombies going back to the playable set of characters and bringing gobblegum as the monetization system if this is the case bringing back gobblegum as the sole monetization system in my opinion is the best way to go so many people did not like operators in black ops cold war it took away from the story and it took away from the lore and I I genuinely believe that if they decided to relegate the operator system specifically for zombies and give a set four playable cast in this game, that would be the best way to go because I cannot understand why in Black Ops Cold War, you get this serious cutscene with Samantha Max as she's all grown up, you first time you see her, and you're playing as a freaking skeleton, or you could even be playing as Samantha Max as herself, or Nicki Minaj, or Snoop Dogg, or 21 Savage, like what? This cannot return in COD Zombies. If they want us to genuinely care about the lore that they're giving out, if they're going to force us to put in a bunch of intel, just like how Cold War did, do not bring back the operator system, which is why if Gobblegum is the sole monetization system, I'm genuinely so happy that Kevin Drew pushed for this because it appeases Activision. And also, this game is going to be the first game that's actually not necessarily fully headed by Activision because now Microsoft owns Call of Duty. So this is why I'm more excited for this game than anything because all of the potential changes that Microsoft wants to introduce into Call of Duty are going to be into this game. However, I do have to say, 
I do not like, and I need to say this, this is a little bit off topic, but I do not like how Microsoft has treated the way Minecraft has come out. Many people have been complaining about Microsoft's treatment with Minecraft, about how they're basically very slow to update a Java-based game that is literally pixelated. Like, it's insane that they have not added any meaningful updates. And even the biggest controversy is that the April Fool's update that they added as a joke with the floater blocks literally was a bigger update than any of the official updates. And this is what scares me because Call of Duty is already in a broken state. And now that Microsoft is coming in, are we even going to be getting less updates or is Microsoft actually going to come in and fix this? Personally, I have not really enjoyed any Microsoft base exclusives. And so this definitely gets me worried because maybe now Gobblegum is being introduced on top of operator bundles and we're just going to be paid and sucked dry by all of these corporate operations, which genuinely, that would be the worst case scenario. I genuinely don't want that to happen. But before we get into these gobblegums, I do want to list some of these cool gobblegums listed by the Reapers collection that I could genuinely see being gobblegums in Black Ops Skull Force. So let's run through them quickly. Here they rise is a purple gobblegum that spawns in 20 extra zombies per activation. That's amazing. Firearm formulation spawns a random weapon power up. That's amazing. Get a random weapon. Armored up. Negate all incoming damage. So it's kind of like a similar elixir from Black Ops 4 with the armor. Bottomless bullets, infinite ammo drops. I mean, infinite ammo would be an amazing drop to add. Barely alive, removes all ammo from held weapon and gives 30 points for each bullet taken. Something really unique, something about adding points and could be used for so many different speed runs. You also have a bunch of whimsicals like zombies killed with headshots create teddy bear explosions. Zombies where duck floats, play the Easter egg song of the map as a whimsical gobblegum. That would be so amazing. A classic where you can drop 500 points as a power-up, which would be also amazing. World War II Zombies added that. Another one, Power Keg, which refills your specialist meter, which I really hope Cold War, you do not add the wand field upgrade. Gulf War, please, listen. I like the wands for Cold War, but if they add it in again in the 90s setting, it literally wouldn't even make sense. I hope the specialist weapons are going back to the Black Ops 3 variation of them being unique. Exceptionally, Eclipse also gives you the specialist weapon of the map. You could get one that spawns a bonfire sale. Another one that uh, nearby zombies will take damage. So it's kind of like burned out. Another whimsical where it launches them up in a rude matter where they like flatulate or something. You've got another one where your next mystery box use will be a random wonder weapon. They could add so many different variations. And you know they're going to be adding stuff like Perkaholic and the OG classics, which is the reason why people even bought the BO3 Gobblegum and the BO4 Elixirs once they finally added that in. And so you have so many different ones here like all purchasers are half price you can buy an extra perk each perk you buy is also given to other players one where it turns on the power switch another one where it gives you the shield another one where it transforms into a random gobblegum which is kind of like flavor hex taking damage from zombies yields 100 points teleport to a down player which we saw in bo4 wall guys get wall buys give a random weapon in place of the wall gun so it's like there's so many different ideas and i genuinely hope that if they go down this gobblegum service they need to do it in a live service way which is the way they're going to be able to grab players in again because it took so long back in black ops 3 to even get gobblegum because we only got four every new dlc pack which was not enough that would be like four every three months which i'm gonna be honest we need to be getting like four every month minimum even like one a week would be so cool you don't have to go the black ops 4 way i really hope that they do not just release a bunch of content and just hope for us to enjoy it release it slowly like a live service game but actually have it be impactful always make sure something fun and new and exciting is coming up on the horizon now zombies chronicles 2 obviously as you guys know i've tweeted this out that black ops 3 custom zombies is bringing you zombies chronicles 2 by all of these creators where we have the transit project the return to transit which is a version pre the moon zombie rocket launch die rise which is by zella dobby and sponsored by myself Buried 5, Mob of the Dead, Call of the Dead, and Nuketown. And so this is all going to be coming out before Black Ops Gulf War, apart from potentially Transit, Buried, and also maybe even Mob of the Dead and 5. So 
It, a couple of these will be late, but the thing is, is that I'm almost certain that Zombies Chronicles 2 will not be launching on this game. If it is, it'll just be transit because of the jet gun in the game files. And then on top of that, I just think that if they do, it's not going to have the same hype as the original. They're not even potentially even going to advertise it as a Zombies Chronicles 2. They're just going to add these maps in the game through live service. And so ultimately, I think if you are looking for something very reminiscent to the original Zombies Chronicles experience, you're going to get that on Black Ops 3. And so for my OG Zombies fans, I would highly recommend getting a PC and waiting for 2025. Like I said, Black Ops 2 sequel will 100% probably have the Zombies Chronicles 2 maps. It would be weird if they didn't add it on the Black Ops 2 sequel game. To me, that doesn't even make sense. And also, I can imagine that game will also be much more OG zombie style compared comparatively to 2024's title as we know i'm a black ops cold war enjoyer i just didn't like the maps on the game which is why i haven't really gone back to it but if we do get to see some better maps with potentially this new cannon map that's on an island that is featured right after the peck storyline which is going to be amazing i think that one will be excited and apparently it's very reminiscent to zetsubo which is also really cool and also has a very similar wonder weapon to the kt4 and what's also exciting is kevin drew is the pioneer of black ops Gold for zombies and he made the original Zetsubo no Shima. so that's really exciting too to see and so we have that map we have the city map which could potentially be transit with the jet gun and we also have objective based zombies either being MWZ or outbreak and so I just hope they do not divide the zombie fans and keep it all towards the same game we don't want any more division there's so much division already throughout this community that I think any more would be too much so ladies and gentlemen I did hope you enjoyed this video if you did please make sure to like comment subscribe and i'll see y'all in that next one